Hey guys, welcome back to another video here. My name is Ryan. Today we're talking about how a radio controlled model jet turbine works. Now we're going to break it down into two different parts. The first part is going to be showing you the model jet turbine and all of the external pieces that we can see. We're going to talk about the starting sequence uh, very simply and then we're going to talk about the second part which jumps right into our 3D CAD model. Now within the 3D CAD model we're going to be able to see exactly what is inside of this turbine, the internal workings of the turbine. So let's get started and first talk about what we see, fuel delivery, and starting sequence as well as the fuels that we use. So first of all, obviously we can see the external housing here of the turbine. At the front we have this cage. This is what blocks any sort of debris from entering the turbine and causing all kinds of problems. From there you can see internal to this screen is the starter motor of the turbine. This is directly connected to the front section here and once it turns on it engages our turbine to start it up. So we'll talk about that very shortly. At the rear side of our jet turbine we have the jet nozzle. This is where all of the thrust of the engine comes out and this propels of course our jet turbine in which case also propels the airplane forward. So let's talk about the fuel delivery within this jet turbine. This one in particular has two specific inputs to the turbine. The one on the top has a small diameter and is for starting purposes. The one on the bottom is for general operation, continuous fuel flow to feed the turbine when it's in full use under the command of the pilot. So what we need to look at now is how we use the fuel flow as well as the starting mechanism in order to get this thing fired up. So what happens is we have our fuel within our jet turbine. There is a computer that controls the amount of fuel flow to the turbine. Everything here is fully automatic. This is known as a Karo start starting engine. So what that entails is that that computer does all of the work for you. You simply need to tell the turbine that you want this thing to fire up and that computer handles all the rest for you. What it's going to do first is start up that electric motor in the front to turn the whole turbine at a specific RPM. Once it hits that RPM, you're gonna have the heater element heating the fuel up. Now fuel in its natural state, which is liquid in our case here, does not burn. Liquid does not burn. You can light a match and drop it into that liquid fuel and it's not gonna burn. Our heating element is going to take it from a liquid state and turn it into a gas state. The gas that comes out from that jet fuel or from the fuel that we use within our turbine is going to be able to ignite. The way that we ignite that is by using a spark plug. The spark plug is going to fire uh, once every second or two and once that flame heats up then we're going to be starting our initial starting sequence. So after that flame is first ignited you do not need the spark plug anymore so that shuts off uh, we still have fuel going through the burner here until it reaches a certain RPM. Once you are able to reach that specific temperature threshold, then the RPMs start to increase by adding more fuel. The transition phase occurs right here where we want to transition off of our, our starting fuel and go to our full burner. Once we get to a certain RPM, full burner is going to be in operation. The RPMs continue to come up until it reaches that minimum idle threshold. Once you hit that minimum idle threshold, the automated ECU, shuts off and now control is given to the operator of the radio control. That is exactly how these things start in a very simplified sort of form. So now as you can imagine you are placing fuel into the fuel tank and operating the turbine. The fuel that you can use consists of generally three different types. There is diesel fuel, there's jet A fuel, as well as kerosene. All three types, most of the turbines out there will be able to burn. There are certain advantages and disadvantages of the three different types of fuel that you're able to use in these turbines. Now let's jump right into our 3D CAD model so that we can see the flow of air and how it goes through the jet turbine. Hey guys, here is our CAD model. We're gonna go and cover the airflow starting at our intake side, making its way through the jet turbine and then exiting out of the back here at our turbine wheel. 
Uh, as you can see, there are a couple components that have been hidden in this model just to simplify it so that we can see the inner workings. We're going to start off at the intake side looking at our first component. You can see that you have these blades here that act in a certain way as if air were to come from an axial direction, so that would be into the intake as such. It would then be thrown to the outside of this turbine. So we get axial flow converted into a centrifugal type of flow here. Now this turbine is known as a one stage centrifugal type turbine. It's centrifugal because it throws the air to the outside and it's a one stage because you have one compressor wheel to compress the air in the entire turbine. As the air enters our turbine it throws it to the outside and you can see one of the first components that it's going to hit is this stator vein. This vein here is going to redirect the air so that it comes in it's going to actually be redirected towards us as you can see. So it ends up going in this direction, it then gets curled around the top of this section and then lands into our stator veins at the top section of the turbine here. As you can see from me clicking here, we have a blue face representing the air. As it comes in, it's going to hit this face and then redirected straight back. So you can see that from this centrifugal type flow, you're going to get the air to start to straighten out. You want that air to come in as straight as possible. And that's the whole point of these stator veins is to redirect the air to get that air flow coming in nice and straight. Once it passes our stator veins on the left hand side, you can see that it now enters the majority of the cavity within the turbine. You can see airflow is going to come in. Remember, it's only this small section along the top here. However, inside of the turbine, this can now flow air all the way up through this top section as well as the rear here and also don't forget it does come in to this area as well as through the very center uh, area here. Now what you'll notice is there is this center section known as our combustion chamber. This is where all the magic happens within a jet turbine. You can see that there is a very specific set pattern of holes on the top here and that is done on purpose. What you want to have happen is you want to have a certain amount of air enter into this cavity. This is where all of the air here is going to be introduced to our jet fuel, whether it be diesel, jet A, or kerosene. We have the fuel entering from this black component here. You can see how it ends up entering in such a way where it follows this tube, this purple tube. You can see on the further side down here that we have that tube as well. You can see there's a number of these tubes within the combustion chamber. What you can also see is that this tube right at the back of the combustion chamber has an opening. You can also see it on the one that is located down here. And what happens with the airflow here is that air will enter the backside of our combustion chamber. When it enters the backside of the combustion chamber, it's going to travel down one of these pipes here that allow the air to mix with the fuel coming out of our black small thin piping. The air is then mixed with the gas and that's what produces the good mixture that we can then uh, turn into a flame front. So the flame front is going to primarily be happening on the front section of our combustion chamber. And what's interesting about this is this is where it's going to be the hottest within our combustion chamber. The temperature here is going to be very high. As the flame then makes its way towards the back, it's also heating up this area here. Our nozzle gets heated and that helps turn that liquid fuel into a gaseous fuel. And that is what burns in our turbine. We always want that gaseous fuel. Then when we get towards the back of this combustion chamber, the air that enters into this area actually helps cool that flame front. We want that flame to be nice and hot when we're burning it. However, we want it to cool down as quickly as possible as it exits the back of this combustion chamber. Now what you'll see is there is a small window of opportunity where the air can escape. 
and it the air is going to be introduced to again another set of static vanes so these vanes are situated on the stator on the rear turbine stator and it redirects air you can see if the air comes down in this direction it's going to redirect it so it goes to the right now this is quite important to note because right behind this we have our main turbine wheel as air ends up hitting so this is now gases that are from combustion when these gases hit the rear turbine here it lands essentially perpendicular to the blade you can see we're looking right down where this air the gas would end up coming down and it hits this turbine blade nearly perpendicular in order to force this in a direction to spin counterclockwise from the rear. So this is where we get the power from our combustion turning this wheel which then is connected on this shaft turning our compressor and starting the process all over again. So with this said you can now see we have the very same sequence of events happening that we're all familiar with from our internal combustion engine. We have our intake cycle where air enters our turbine it gets compressed by our compressor wheel and then we have combustion that that takes place in our combustion chamber and then we have the exhaust event happening as a last part of the cycle. Now what's really interesting about these gas turbines is it does contain an oil within the fuel. Now this sort of mixture of gas and oil is a 100% complete consumption mix. Every bit of fuel and oil is going to be consumed by the engine. You are not saving oil. The only real purpose of the oil is to lubricate parts as well as keep the temperatures down within the turbine bearings. So you can see there are two bearings that are used, one on the front side here and one on the rear side. As you can imagine, there would be an awful lot of heat accumulating on the rear turbine right in this area. Now what the oil is able to do is make its way into this area so that it's able to help cool off these components here. Cooling off the components in this area is going to allow the bearing to survive. Now these bearings are rated for a ton of RPM. This specific turbine that I showed you in the first part of the video spins at a maximum RPM of 152,000 RPM. This bearing is fully capable of providing a long lifespan at that RPM as long as it doesn't get too hot. With the use of the proper oil Oils, temperatures can be maintained so that this bearing is not overworked and the turbine is able to provide reliable continuous operation. So there you have it in a nutshell. That is exactly how these radio controlled model jet turbines work. We have air entering the front intake combustion happening within the center core and then exhaust happening within the last part of our turbine. Now I hope you enjoyed this video here talking about how jet turbines work. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like the video if you do, and I'll see you in that next one. Thank you for watching.